Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So if you're new here, we solve a lot of problems on this channel and today we're going to be looking at the isomorphic strings problem. So I'm going to show you two solutions for this problem and the second one is a little bit more tricky so I want to start off with the easier solution. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that really helps me create these amazing content for you guys. Awesome, so let's go ahead and dive right in. What this question is asking uh, when it says isomorphic strings is that we're given two strings here s and t and what we need to figure out is if there is a way to map each um, letter in s to each letter in t and if they're consistent or not okay so let me use an example to explain um, what this means so let's say this is s and this is t um, so in S, we have E here, and this maps to, um, so we are given two strings like egg and add, okay? So now what we need to figure out is, is it consistently mapping to the second string? So if the first string E here maps to A, um, then what should happen is if we see another E here, it should also map to A. Like they need to mirror each other's mapping. So that's essentially what the question is asking. So here we can see that G is mapping to D. Again, G is mapping to D. And if all of this maps, that's good. We just return true. Otherwise, we return false if it doesn't, if there's a mismatch in the mapping. Okay, so one of the things that um, the first solution that comes to mind when we see a problem like this is, okay, we need to do some kind of mapping. So a hash map is a good candidate for this. The first thing I'm going to do is create my two maps um, that we're going to compare. So I'm going to say let C map equals, and we're going to initialize this with an object. And then same here, let um, T map equals empty object. Okay, great. So we have that. Now what we need to do is um, populate, sorry, this should be S map. Yeah, so we're going to populate uh, this mapping here in the diagram. So we're going to map each of the elements in S to each of the elements in T. Um, and then in the T map, we're going to do the same thing. So each of the elements in T are going to map to each of the elements in S. So to do that, um, I'm going to iterate through um, the um, string s so i can say for let i equal zero and i is less than s dot length okay i plus plus okay great um so we are in this loop now and what what i'm going to do is pick out character by character um each of the elements from t and s and we only need one loop because they are the same length we have an edge case here that returns false if they're not the same length because they can't be isomorphic so i'm going to say let um, s car equal s i okay, great and let t car equals T I great so now we have each of the elements and now we're just going to populate the maps so we can say that if s map at the index of s car so if that character um, let's say does not exist so equals undefined okay so if that does not exist, then we need to populate it and map it to the T card. So we're going to say, okay, at that index, put um, T card. Okay. So what we did just now is we took this P and we mapped it to the T. Then we're going to do the same thing from T's perspective. So for string T, up, so if T map I have a typo here. If T map 
um, at the index of t char is equal to undefined, okay, then what we need to do is uh, we will map that index to the s char. Okay. And what I did right now is I mapped this t to this p. Okay. Now the last step we need to do is compare if the p um, from the s map um, maps to or is equal to the same um, value in the t map. So we're just we're just checking. We're going to check if the two blue boxes here in the diagram are mapping. S map s car right is not equal to t car. Okay. So if at that index it's not the same as what is in the t car, or the other way, um, if T map T car, what is at map to that index is not the S car, right? So basically, if there's any mismatch in the mapping, then we are going to return false. Okay. Otherwise, return true. All right, so I'm going to run this. Okay, accepted, awesome, and I'm going to submit. Yay, awesome, it works. And now we're at the second part of the solutioning, and this is a little more tricky, so don't worry if you didn't understand it first. So hopefully I can shed some light and clarify this solution. Uh, so the basic idea here is that we are going to create um, two arrays, and what this is going to help us do is um, use the indexing already available from the ASCII characters, um, to apply to this problem. So what do I mean by this? So if you represent um, A in ASCII, uh, that will give you 97, right? So that is the index that is used to um, convert each letter into ASCII. So here we have, like if we have an array here starting from um, zero to including all the symbols, lower capital cases up to 128, and somewhere around here is where uh, A starts, right? So lowercase a is at 97 position, right? So what we can do is use this to our advantage and use this indexing to tell us, okay, can we match the counts of the character mappings? So that's essentially what we're doing, big picture. Now let's dive into an example and see case by case how this would work. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the same example as um, the first example in the problem, which is where S is egg and um, T is add, okay? So what we can do is if we were to iterate over this, we can see that, okay, well, E um, maps to 101 here. So that's the index for E. So somewhere over here um, where we have 101 is going to be this E. And if we initialize this list um, with all zeros, so what we can do is we can just increment the count here from zero to one. So that's now a one. Um, and then we will also go to um, the T and at the T at position 97, which you can see here, the count will also be one. So we incremented these two, right? And you can see that currently, E is mapped to A. That's why their both counts are one and one. And this is what we're comparing, right? So we're comparing the counts of each of the um, elements as they occur. So we're doing one by one. Okay, next item is G. So G is, uh, I think that is 103. Yeah, okay. Yeah, E, F, G. Okay, so yeah, so that's correct. Uh, so at 103 now, okay, so we're at 103, um, and what we're going to do is we will take this current index, which is currently 1, so we're at position 1 now, and we're going to map this index, um, we're going to add 1 to this count. 
So we'll take the so what we're saying is okay at index one, this is the mapping we have. So we're going to add one here. And this is going to give us at 103 position, we will have two. And then at the second one, D, which is at position 100, okay? And our index is still two because we are going one by one, right? So that will also be two. And these two are equal, so we're good. And then we move on to the third case where again, we are at index um, two now, right? So we are here. So we're at index two and we're going to um, add one to this. So G again, the same spot is 103. So now this is going to be two plus one, which is three, right? So that's how you get three. And here again, um, if we um, uh, see, check this D here, we are going to add one more to its current index, which is two plus one, which is three. Okay, great. So now everything is mapped up and all the counts are equal. Okay, now let's take a case where the counts would not be equal. Um, so if I added another S here um, at this index three, right? And if I added a D here, right? So D is already mapped to G, right? So um, this breaks the uh, isomorphic quality of this string. So this is a test case that should fail and we should return false for this. So when we have this D here, we're going to go again and um, check this uh, position here. So at position 100, um, this is three, right? So that's the current position. Okay, so we have position three. And if we look here at this S, so S is 115, right? So here, the index, the count is zero, right? So zero is not equal to three, right? So this is how we know that, okay, this is not an isomorphic string because if they were equal, um, their counts of at each position would have been equal. So that's the basic idea behind this second solution. Uh, I hope this helps you understand how to um, apply the ASCII codes to solve this type of problem. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So I'm back in the code and the first thing I'm going to do, so I have already um, defined these two empty arrays and just filled them with zeros for now. And what we're going to do is just increment the count as we showed in the drawing. So I'm going to have a for loop here. So let's say for let i equals zero, and then i is less than s dot length. So we only need to iterate through one of the strings since they're the same size. And then we're going to do i plus plus. And OK, now we're going to get each of the character codes um, from this list. So to get the ASCII characters, we can say uh, let s char equals s dot char code add, um, and we want to get that index. So we will say i, right? So at that position, we're going to get that character's um, code. Um, so for example, e um, refers to 101, right? So that is what we're getting here. And then we can say let t char, maybe I should call it s index, maybe s idx. Okay, I feel like that's a better name for it. We can say t idx, okay? So that's equal to t dot char code at i. Okay, so that's fine. And Okay, so now we have our ASCII codes. Um, now we need to do some mapping to make sure that um, the counts match, right? So what we can do is we will say um, add that index. So S array, which we defined here, um, add the index of S ideas. And we will increment the count as we 
uh, find the same letters, right? So we can say at that letter, we're just going to add the current position plus one. And same thing with the um, T array, T I D X. Okay, so equal to I plus one. Okay, so this is good, um, and then we need to we need to do the checking to make sure that the counts are not mismatched. So if we look here in our drawing, um, in this case we have uh, three at this index three. We found out that okay, well D is the count of D is three, and the count of S is zero, right? So that's a mismatch, and that tells us that. Um, these are not mapped properly. So to check that, what we can say is if s array s idx. So if that um, elements count is not equal to t array t idx. Okay. So if this is the case, then go ahead and return false. Okay, otherwise increment the count when you find that letter um, at that index and then once that for loop is done, that means we're good, it didn't return false, so we can uh, return true here. Okay, yeah, looks okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run the code. Okay, so that's fine and submit. Yay, awesome, it works. Okay, okay, good.